the purposes of this video is to just talk a little bit more about our first paper on message, purpose, and audience. Um, I'm not going to cover every single detail on the assignment sheet, but I will elaborate on places where necessary. So this assignment is worth 200 points or 20% of your final grade, and it's covering a good majority of the course learning objectives. Um, the question is, what is the message and purpose, and who is the audience of early American literature? Now this final part seems really broad. I don't need you to answer the question about every single early American text. In fact, I just want you to select one that we've read so far or will read between weeks one through six. Now, I know that we're talking about this early in week two, so what you might wanna do is take a look at the course schedule and see if anything sticks out that might be upcoming. So if you're really into kind of like some of those initial, um, like right after um, America becomes its own country, maybe you like that section of early American lit, then you might want to jump down and, and preview some of the readings for week five. Um, or if you're into more of like the um, Puritan and religious readings, then you might take a look at things from week four or even in week two, or if you're um, interested in some more Native American writings, then you might take a look at um, week three. You are definitely able to uh, analyze anything that we've already read or that we will read this week, um, but you're not held to just that. You can go all the way up until week six, and that's perfectly fine for this paper. Okay, um, what I want you to do once you pick your text is analyze the text in order to identify the purpose of the text, why was it written, the message the author is trying to send, what do they want to tell people, and the audience for whom the message is intended. Who was this written for? Um, make sure you are clear and direct, and you're going to want to ensure that you use specific and quoted evidence from the text that you choose in order to support your thinking. So if you say, well, the audience is um, uh, settlers in Virginia, well, how do you know that that's the audience? You have to look at the text, quote from the text, and explain your thinking within your paper. So this is really very much a literary analysis paper. Um, please do not include any secondary research. I want your thinking and your understanding to come from you. You can um, look at the biographies of the authors that are found within our course textbook, and you can look at the Unit 1 introduction content that's kind of in the beginning pages of our textbook. That's perfectly fine to reference. But I don't want you to go to Google um, or any kind of website that analyzes literature, and I don't want you to try to understand the text better by doing research. You should read the text, you should work to understand it, and you should work to, on your own, identify purpose, message, and audience. You might be concerned, well, what if I'm wrong? Am I going to get a bad grade? There's really no right or wrong answer. It's all about how you can support your ideas. So um, make sure they're your ideas and they're supported by you. And if you're doing that, you're gonna be just fine. Um, I'm asking for a full three pages. You can definitely go over anything less than three pages. We'll get some points taken off once we get to the rubric section. Ideally, you wouldn't exceed six pages. I don't expect anyone to even get to six pages, but um, you know, if you happen to, Try not to go over six pages. Again, no outside research, but you may consult your textbook. That's perfectly fine. Um, an example thesis statement would look something like, in Rip Van Winkle, Washington Irving attempts to persuade the wives of American men to convince their husbands to quit drinking by sending the message that too much alcohol consumption will cause Americans to waste the best years of their lives. So let's break this down and find out where the prompt is being met in this thesis statement. So one of the questions is, what is the, or who is the audience? So um, we find that Washington Irvin attempts to persuade the wives of American men. That's what this thesis statement is identifying. The audience is the wives of American men. What is the purpose? Irving is trying to persuade. So the purpose here is persuasion. Um, who's he persuading? 
He's persuading the wives of American men. So now we have identified just within this one sentence the audience and the purpose. And then what is the message? And so we're really direct in this thesis statement. And it says by sending the message that too much alcohol consumption will cause Americans to waste the best years of their lives. So you can notice how this message is tailored to the audience, not about the text, but what is that central idea or that thinking or even that theme that's coming out uh, after reading the text for the reader or the audience that's identified here. So we can find all of that in the thesis statement and that's the goal. You want to make sure that your thesis can meet these goals by, um, you know, doing this kind of test. Does your thesis tell me who the audience is? Does your thesis tell me what the purpose is? And does your thesis tell me what the message of the text is? If the answer is yes, you probably have a strong thesis. Um, you want to structure your paper just like any other paper that you've written. You have a hook sentence, background information in your introduction. That background information for the purposes of literary writing needs to be um, the author, the title of the text, and a short summary of the text. And then you end that introduction with a thesis statement. Your body paragraphs should make specific claims about purpose, message, and audience. If there's multiple audiences, write multiple paragraphs for each of those audiences. Start with a topic sentence, provide context, provide evidence, analyze the evidence, and then end on a concluding sentence. Remember, make sure that you never ever begin or end a paragraph on a direct quote. Those are breaking some key rules of academic writing. In your conclusion, restate your thesis and just talk a little bit about why this type of analysis matters or why this message matters. Is this message still relevant today? Maybe something you could, um, you could consider in your conclusion. You should have a works cited page. The only citation I should see on your works cited page is the citation for the text that you analyzed within our textbook. There should not be, as far as I can think or predict, there should not be any additional citations um, that, that you should have. <clears throat> Format this in MLA 8th edition. Um, there are some resources to help you. So there are some lecture videos that might help you here. There's some sections within the LMS on MLA formatting when writing about literature. And there are some sections within the Little Seagull Handbook, if you still have that from English 111 or English 112, um, that might be relevant here. Now I reference the third edition. So if you have the fourth edition, that's fine. The page numbers might just be a little bit different. Of course, you turn this in on the LMS. Um, with the rubric, I'm looking at formatting. I am looking at your thesis statement. I'm looking at your ability to identify, do you tell me what the audience is? Do you tell me the purpose? Do you tell me the message? I'm looking at your ability to provide evidence to support that identification. I'm looking at your ability to analyze that evidence to further support your identification of audience purpose and message. And finally, I'm looking at your development and structure. Do you have nicely developed paragraphs with pieces of evidence, um, multiple, you know, multiple pieces of evidence, and in-depth, um, specific, and explored analysis? Um, does your essay meet the structure that I've outlined here um, for an academic essay on literature? So um, that's what I'm looking at.